This lesson deals with average and reactive power. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 16, starting on page 1. Earlier in the course, we saw that Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law, and eventually Ohm's law, mapped from the time domain to the frequency domain. What we're going to take a look at in this chapter is a way to do the same thing for power, but it's going to require a little different definition of what we've done before. To lead into this, let's start by taking a look at the instantaneous power absorbed by a two-terminal device. In the time domain, we have V of T and I of T, shown as absorbing current going in the plus terminal coming out of the minus terminal. Suppose that V of T is equal to an amplitude of V sub A and a cosine of omega T plus some angle we'll call it theta sub V. And that the current that flows here has an amplitude I sub A and is also the cosine of omega T but has a different phase angle, we'll call it theta sub I. Now suppose that we rotate all of our source phasors by a scalar equal to minus theta sub I. What this effectively will do is move all of the phasors by the same amount, and that would result in our current having a phase angle of zero. This is effectively the same as changing the definition of t equals zero, which is an arbitrary selection. So now our V of t is equal to V sub a cosine of the quantity omega t plus theta sub v minus theta sub i. And so we've got the difference of these two. Let's just call that theta. So it's the angle of the voltage minus the angle of the current in our original problem. And the current now, I sub A cosine of omega T plus theta sub I minus theta sub I, just giving us I sub A times the cosine of omega T. Then our product of voltage and current then would be the product of these two, which would be V sub A, I sub A, cosine of the quantity omega T plus theta, and then cosine of omega T. I'm going to break this into a summation of terms, and that's going to lead us to our definition of complex power. We recall from algebra, we had some trig identities, one of which was the product of two cosine functions. Pull this out of a math handbook. Cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta is equal to one half the cosine of alpha minus beta plus one half the cosine of alpha plus beta. Back over here, let's let alpha be omega t plus theta and then beta be omega t. So then our instantaneous power would be v sub a i sub a and then we have a half and then we have this term which takes alpha minus beta. So here's my alpha minus beta. So the omega t's cancel and I just get the cosine of theta. And then for my second term, I'm gonna have a half, so I'll put that over here. And now I've got the cosine of alpha plus beta. So now I've got omega twice plus theta. So I've been able to rewrite this then as a summation of two terms. I also like to get this as a summation of a single term with the argument for the cosine. So let's again go back to some trig identities. And another one that you may have seen before is that the cosine of alpha plus beta is the cosine of beta cosine of alpha minus the sine of beta times the sine of alpha. So here, let's let alpha be omega t times two, and let's let beta be theta. So you have this first term here, and then I've got this term, which v sub a, i sub a over two. Then I have the cosine of beta, which is the cosine of theta, and then I have the cosine of two omega t, this term right here. The second term, then I've got the v sub a, i sub a over two, I've got a minus sign, and then I have the sine of beta, which is the sine of theta, and then the sine of alpha, which is two omega t. So now I've written my instantaneous power as a summation of three terms. Here's really a constant because theta was the difference of the angle of the voltage and the angle of the current in my original problem. So it's going to get a number here. It was if this was a cosine of 45 degrees, you just have a, a value for that. I have that same value here, and then here's a function that's changing with time. And then I have another term again, it's a constant, and I get the sine of that same frequency. Now I could rewrite this with maybe some shorthand notation. We'll call that equal to capital P. So this first term here would just be the capital P. The second term has got that capital P term and then the cosine of two omega T. Now let me define this term here, I sub A, V sub A over two times the sine of theta. I'll call that Q. And so I can then represent that by a single letter. So I have the minus sign and then times the sine of two omega T. Let's take our definition of RMS, which is related to the peak voltage or current divided by the square root of two. So let me, let me take this two here and write it as the square root of two times the square root of two. So when I multiply these two together, I get two squared, square root, I get two. So then what I've got here is the RMS voltage and the RMS current times the cosine of theta. The same is true here if I write this as the square root of two times the square root of two. P is equal to the voltage in RMS times the current in RMS times the cosine of the angle of the voltage minus the current in our original problem. And Q would be Likewise, the voltage RMS times the current RMS times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle of voltage minus the angle of the current. 
In our next video, we'll define P here as average or real power, and we'll define Q as reactive power. And these are some of the properties of average and reactive power.